Welcome back. The defenders of John Moselock will say, never a losing season in 15 years. The critics will counter with, it's a last place team with one win in the last decade in the NLCS. We thought this would be a good week to talk about the past, present, and future of the Cardinals with the team president. In general, when did you know that this group was just not going to work? Feels like it was early on. I mean, the, the month of April was just a massive struggle. You think back to the last, you know, really 15, 20 years, we've always had a pretty quick April and gotten off to a good start, which allowed us to have some ups and downs throughout the season. But this one, we, we, we found ourselves in the valley and we really felt like it was an uphill climb. And obviously, April, we played a little better, but not good enough. And, and so I think between the injuries and, and just performance, um, kind of came to that realization pretty early that this was going to be a challenge. I know you don't want to make excuses either, but that World Baseball Classic really did you no favors. I think two things. One is the WBC definitely, I think, set us back a little bit. We had 18 players participating in it. You've heard me say this before, two-fifths two of our rotation, uh, three-fourths of our infield, and two-thirds of our outfield. And of course, some of those guys subsequently, I th don't think were quite ready to go when the season started. I think it definitely affected us from a rotation standpoint. Obviously, Wayno got hurt. And I also think the beginning of the season, our schedule was challenging. Um, you know, West Coast trip right away. Um, I think just trying to catch our breath and catch our feeding, our footing at that point was, was something that we just never grabbed hold of. So you said the other day that you need three starting pitchers. Is the likely scenario two via free agency and one via trade? I think it's a little premature to start guessing like how do we solve that uh, equation, but I think, you know, like our fans want to know what we're going to do, and, and so it's a fair question. I think as far as how we strategize and accomplish it, uh, time will tell. Not sure how much you can reveal here, but have you chatted with Mr. DeWitt, letting him know that we are going to have to spend more. Does he already know that? I mean, can we see a significant increase in payroll this offseason? I don't think it's so much like increase relative to where, right? You're going to have some players drop off of, of this current payroll. We're going to have resources uh, to spend if we feel like we need it. Uh, Bill and I talk almost every day. So um, do, we, do we spend a lot of energy just focused on payroll? No, but we, we understand that things have to be different as we look at 2024. And we're just curious what those combinations might look like and where we might be able to, to improve, whether it is trades or free agency. And how would you describe the free agent starting pitching pool this offseason? This seems to be the right offseason to go shopping. There's a lot. Well, there's definitely some depth. I don't know if it has the excitement of, of past years when you talk about like aces, but um, you know, I, I do feel like there's going to be some options for us. So when you say you need three, that means you're counting Michaelis and Mats as your two, and then you're bringing in three. And then where does Libertor, Thompson, and maybe somebody we haven't seen in a Cardinal uniform fit into the equation? Well, I think that that's part of the competition. But as we sit here today in, in middle of August and start to think about what we want our spring training to look like, to really set up what we want 2024 to look like, I just feel like we know we're going to need innings. Um, when you say, like, where does a Libby or Thompson fit in, they might be in the rotation. So that means maybe one of the starters we sign ends up having to go into the bullpen. So we'll see. But I'm certainly excited what we're seeing out of Libertor most recently. Um, Thompson's been throwing the ball well. But I don't want it to be like, oh, just because they finish strong means we're not going to still try to be aggressive. Another issue is the bullpen. And at one time, you felt pretty good. You had Jordan Hicks, Giovanni Gallegos, and Ryan Helsley. And none of it's really worked out for a variety of reasons. You have to reshape the whole thing, don't you? I don't know if I'd say the whole thing, but we obviously are going to have to add some arms. We're going to have to rethink some roles. And you know, hopefully, we can go into next year knowing Helsley will be someone we can count on. So like the next six weeks does matter because Getting him to a point where he can feel confident about a normal offseason is important. I think I heard you say less clutter, like cleaning up a position where there's not so many options. So let me ask you about the middle infield. You have Nolan Gorman, who's going to hit 30 home runs at age 23. Seemingly, he's got to get 500 bats for the next five years. And then you have this marvelous talent in Mason Wynn. But oh, by the way, Tommy Edmond has a 1,000 OPS this month. You can only play two of them. What about that whole middle infield situation moving forward? 
Well, I think a lot of it's going to depend on what we do in the outfield, um, how we think through it. I mean, the one thing about Tommy is he gives you some flexibility. Um, so, so I think like trying to determine exactly how we split all this up is a bit premature. But clearly, someone like a Mason Wynn, uh, I, I do imagine we'll see him at some point this year. And I think that'll give us a good gauge of where we think he is in terms of can he be that everyday shortstop moving forward. Can you picture Tommy Edmond as an everyday center fielder if Wynn comes as advertised? Um, possibly. Um, but I could also see Tommy Edmond going back to second base, too, and then trying to get a little bit more flexibility with, with Gorman playing on the corners and DHing. So, I mean, I wouldn't rule anything out right now. I think you have to almost think about it as like a whiteboard and understand that the more flexibility you have with some of these players, the better off we are. All right, let's talk outfield. How about Jordan Walker at this stage of his de- development, particularly defensively? Are you getting more pleased? I think the offseason for him is going to be critical. Um, working on his defense, p- putting him in a position to be more successful is, is, is vital to his success. I do like where his bat's going. I think from an offensive standpoint, he's going to be that middle-of-the-order type hitter for years to come. But we have to be patient with the defense. What about Tyler O'Neill at this stage of his career? He's really hit better since he's come back. But can you afford to pencil him in as an everyday outfielder with his injury history? The skill of going pole to pole is what makes somebody like a Nolan Arenado, um, a Paul Goldschmidt, a Yadier Molina so special because they understand the day-to-day grind. And of course, there's going to be times they don't feel great, but they still go. Pole to pole is an important aspect of, of how you think about the game. And Tyler specifically? Well, I think when Tyler's case is he's, he's only been able to do that one time in his career. And so he has to strike that balance and find out how he can get himself through a 162. On Adam Wainwright, I detect from what you said Monday in the dugout that this can't go on much longer, just trotting him out there. It's, it's really hard on a team when you're down 4 nothing, 5 nothing before you've even had your second at bats. It's just, it can be very demoralizing. And what we don't want this season to end up in is where it just appears to be like a sideshow of things. We, we want to give him every opportunity we can, but there's a give and take there too. And he's got to give himself a chance to go deeper into a game and allow us a chance to win.